Hi friends, welcome to episode number 9 of our Master Planning Level 1 series. In this episode, we will continue to explore about the calendar types in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation and understand various types of calendars available in Dynamics 365. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel D3 Spray Talks or follow my profile in LinkedIn. With that note, let's quickly jump into today's topic. So let's discuss about uh, the calendar types and uh, make sure that you watch the video episode number eight and uh, if you are already aware of the how to configure the calendar and working time templates then i will not recommend you to watch episode number eight then you can directly get into episode number nine right so talking about the calendar types first of all there are various types of calendars uh, which are which need to be configured in the system for the master planning to pick the appropriate calendar schedules whenever the shipping and receipt dates are getting calculated, right? So, so the different calendars are used by the master planning engine or explained, including how they affect the shipping and receiving dates. So here primarily we will be looking into the three different types of calendars. One is the winter calendar, the transport calendar and the warehouse calendar. We will not be discussing in detail about the resource calendar, customer calendars and stuffs. And uh, because we are primarily focusing on the planned purchase orders, and uh, so that these are the calendars which are primarily having an impact as well as the planned purchase orders are generated. So the first one is the vendor calendar. Users can set up calendars that define each vendor standard operating hours. So these vendor calendars can be of two types. Either it can define the standard operating days for the vendors, or it can define, or we can define the standard shipping days for the vendor. Right, so it's not necessary like vendor can be operating from Monday to Friday, but they still continue to ship the material on Saturday and Sundays. So in order to accommodate those scenarios, you need to kind of configure the vendor operating calendar and also the vendor shipping calendar. So the system uses these calendars when it calculates the lead time, delivery time and other dates. So this is the tricky part. Um, so the system primarily uses these calendars along with the safety margins which we kind of discussed in our previous episodes. So that's where the system will try to arrive at the lead times based on the calendars of the vendor. And we will also see what is the hierarchy being followed by the end of this episode so that which will be considered as a priority when the most planning engine runs. The days when vendor can ship orders might differ from the standard operating hours. That's what we discussed. So their operating standard operating hours can be completely different from the days during which the vendor op vendor actually ships the material. Also, the shift in which they operate uh, can also differ if they if they want to willing if they are even still willing to transport the material during the maybe the weekday nights or in the weekends. So you need to that's why we we do have two separate calendars. So with this, let's go back to system and understand where we need to configure the vendor calendar. So you need to can configure the vendor calendars. I am sure that we have now created the calendars in the organization administration. We have created test calendar. And uh, so once the calendar is created, then all you have to do is if you go to accounts payable or procurement sourcing module, go to all vendors master. And then in the vendors master, if you go inside any of the vendors form, you need to configure the calendars under two sections. One is if you get into the purchase order defaults first tab, uh, so so here I think uh, purchase order, purchase calendar, yeah. So this is the purchase calendar, which is the standard operating calendar for the vendor Acme office supplies. So let's say if we configure uh, a 24 hour calendar, then it means that the vendor is primarily operating 24 hours and it takes whatever the operating days which we have as open or closed days as per the 24 hour calendar, right? And at the same time, um, in the invoice and delivery section, ideally the shipping calendar should be available. If it is not available, make sure that you can personalize the uh, this section by adding the field. It's not necessary. You can add it only in invoice and delivery. Uh, the ship calendar should be available here. Yeah, so let's add this field. The ship calendar basically helps the master planning engine to consider what is the shipping days which are applicable for this vendor. So you need to assign the shipping calendar and based on which your delivery will be planned. Uh, this is also something which is considered when the when the master planning engine runs and it takes the safety margins for calculating the lead times and delivery dates. 
right? So for the vendors, you need to configure two main calendars. One is your standard operating calendar and the shipping calendar. Standard operating calendars are by, by default con configured under purchase order defaults. So this is where you configure that. And uh, also you can add the shipping calendar over here and then if it is not by, by default available and then provide a calendar for the shipping um, allowed days, right? So this is for vendor calendars. Coming back to our slide, uh, so the next important calendar which we need to configure is the transport calendar. So transport calendar, what we mean here is the organization in which the users are trying to ship the transfer orders or the any other sales or deliveries, how do we calculate the uh, transportation uh, deliveries and that how, what are the dates which the system is supposed to take, right? So the transport calendars are basically used predominantly for these uh, shipping transfer orders. And uh, under one of the, even we discussed about this, one of the output for the master planning engine is also to generate the planned transfer orders along with the planned purchase orders. So when the planned transfer orders are getting generated, the system is going to check the transport calendars and based on which it is going to suggest the ship and receipt date. The ship date is for the based on the transport calendar in the farm warehouse and the, the two um, the receipt date is based on the two arrows whatever the the calendar which we have configured so to indicate the dates when shipping transfer orders can be shipped from a from arrows so this is what i said from a from arrows when it can be shipped so that's what is configured here and uh, also each mode of delivery for each mode of delivery from a under from arrows so what it primarily means is Depending on your mode of delivery, let's say you have a delivery by road or air or by rail, you define the mode of delivery and for each and mode of delivery and each type of arrows, you can define the uh, transport calendar. We'll quickly quickly see that so that you get an understanding of it. And also to apply a transport calendar to all shipments that use a specific mode of delivery, regardless of the arrows, let's say you do not want to consider the arrows and you have you are geographically located in a specific location, and you want to always consider irrespective of the arrows, you always want to provide a default transport calendar, then make sure that you create a line with no arrows. If the no arrows is not provided, then it means that any, uh, the uh, by default, any arrows you use, by default, the transportation calendar will be the same. If no transport calendar is assigned, the system assumes that all days are open. This is by default is applicable for any of the cases. So, for example, even if you are creating the next step for a Varos calendar and if you are not assigning a calendar, then it means the Varos is available by default for all the 365 days. So, having said that, now let's go get back to the system, understand where do we configure this because um, I have been telling like we can configure this along with the mode of delivery, right? Um, so, so, how do we configure this? Um, so, if you go to sales and marketing under this setup, so if you go to setup, a section called distribution, and then we have mode of delivery. So for each and every mode of delivery, you can configure the applicable transport calendar. Let's say for example, for air, which is a mode of delivery, the transport calendar on the top, and then you can specify for each and every barrow. So this is what we were discussing in the presentation. So for if you are leaving this barrows blank, and then if you are capturing only the mode of delivery and the transport calendar, then which means for uh, all the viruses for this mode of delivery 20 by default the calendar will be um, test calendar so this is how the system understands the configuration but in case if you specify a virus specific virus like 11 whenever that is a, a transfer or shipping happens from the trans the virus 11 always the calendar test calendar is considered and also your mode of delivery should be air so this is where it's not but the varrows is not mandatory like i said you can count you can configure it without the varrows also and uh, so this is where you need to configure the transport calendar and uh, also make sure that it is stacked to respective mode of deliveries um these are the mode of deliveries which are available in the demo data right and uh, so that's the second one the third important one is how do we configure the varrows calendar so you need to assign for for if you are a retail manufacturing company or distribution company, you need to configure the calendar for your Varos operations also to indicate what are all those operational dates or the open dates for receiving and shipping the materials. When are, what are all the open dates for you to receive the material? So the master planning engine generates the receipt dates also based on the um, the Varos operating days. So 
If no calendar is assigned to a warehouse, the system assumes that the warehouse is open every day. This is what exactly the same, the if the similar to what we have discussed in the transportation calendar, no calendar is designed assigned, then it is obviously uh, the system considers that every day will be an open day for receiving or shipping. And assigning a calendar to transit warehouse does not have any impact. So we actually discussed about the concept of transit warehouse as we are we were discussing on the advanced warehouse management processes. Um, I will also share the link for the playlist in this description. Please do check out the same. But uh, if you are using a transit warehouse to perform your transfer orders, in those cases, the, for the transit warehouse, this warehouse calendar is not applicable. Um, and then also the applicable shipping and receipt dates are defined by open days within the from warehouse and the two warehouse. So for both the from warehouse and the two warehouse, you need to define the warehouse calendar. Um, so let me go back. Um, so if we go, how do we configure the warehouse calendar? If I go to Varos management module, and then set up Varos, Varoses. Um, so, so by default, in under the master planning force tab, you can configure the calendar applicable for the Varos for the each and every for in, in this case it is Varos eleven, and you need to configure the type the the type of calendar which is applicable. And uh, like I said, in this case, if you have a transit Varos twenty nine. And if I go to 29 and uh, still even though you can see that you can assign a calendar but it's not really going to add value so you will not be able the transit warehouse even though you assign the calendar the system is not going to pick that so this is what we were discussing so for transit warehouse it is not applicable but for the from warehouse and two warehouse if you are processing any planned transfer orders then system is going to check the trans um, the warehouse operating days based on the calendar assigned in the master planning for tab. So that is about Varos calendar. So we have vendor calendar, we have transport calendar and the Varos calendar. And uh, we also have other calendars like shipping calendars. Feel free to pass this video you know, if you want to uh, go through the description what I have written over here. But uh, these are more of, we are not covering it right now. But uh, if you want to understand how the shipping calendar works per legal entity, then all you have to do is you need to configure this in the um, organization administration and then uh, organizations legal entities so you need to configure this shipping calendars at the legal entity level uh, in order to define the legal entity specific shipping calendars applicable and uh, so this is something which should be available in foreign trade yeah so this is where you need to configure the shipping calendar and this will be considered whenever the shipping operations are performed but uh, we are not going to look into the details of it because we, we are primarily focusing on the planned purchase orders right now and uh, so similarly we have customer calendars where we are understanding the customer operating days and uh, also the resource calendars on which the resource uh, is available for you to meet the capacity or not right so if you want to understand more in detail about the resource calendars, please do check out the playlist of production discrete manufacturing, which we have already published. This is one of the most important uh, slide, I would say, in where we are trying to understand the priority. Um, so if we are, let's say, if we are looking at how the master planning is going to generate the receipt date for the planned purchase orders, then the planned purchase order is first going to check what is the vendor calendar, vendor operating standard operating days and uh, that's that's a priority number one and then it's going to look at also at the coverage group that's a priority number two i'm not told you about the coverage group probably i'll get back to dynamics 365 screen um, you can also configure the calendars in the coverage group and assign the coverage group to the item we already saw about the details of the coverage group uh, as we are progressing through the series if you are watching this series right from the beginning you must be aware of it and uh, the coverage group if you see uh, and against each and every coverage group you will be able to add a calendar and uh, once if this calendar is assigned and uh, the coverage group has to be assigned at the master plan level or at the item coverage level or from the in the in the release products itself and i also shared what is the priority when we, when all these three s are assigned also you have a global parameter in the master planning parameters um, so if you go to master planning parameters so so here also the general coverage group will be there otherwise the the date would be picked from here right and then um, so so that's about uh, the calendars and like i said the priority is something which we need to consider so the receipt date is calculated based on the vendor is the priority one followed by varos and the coverage group 
for the shipping date and receipt date always the i would say for shipping date is primarily from the from warehouse so the from warehouse is considered first but in case of receipt date it's the two warehouse um so from the two warehouse is always taken on priority uh, so this two warehouse is considered next but uh, the receipt date is basically based on the coverage group so so the you need to be aware of whether if it is a shipping date then primarily the from the from warehouse it is considered and if it is a receipt date it is primarily the two warehouse which is considered so i think with that we are kind of coming to the end of this episode and in the next episode we will discuss in detail about the net requirements concept in master planning make sure that you subscribe to the channel d3 spy talks or follow my profile in linkedin see you soon in next episode